any meeting to order. And with that being said, um, there are no approval of the minutes um, because Tim didn't get a chance to do them. So we'll do, do that at the next meeting. And I'll turn it over to Taylor or Dan. Yeah, I think we're going to turn the meeting um, right over to CGA and they have some updates for us. And they might take the design update um, of the floor plan um, out of order of the site. But you, know, you guys can have at it. Thanks. So picking up um, from where we left off last time, we had discussed that um, we chose two site concepts to develop further. So that's what I've done so we can discuss that tonight. I've got some handouts for you. No, I, 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 can you see, I can see all right. Yeah, I can see fine. Really? Yeah. yeah. Not just back my head? Mm. Just don't move. These are the, uh, these are the big things. Well, we can see, but you can't see, right? Oh, you see? You want to slide over here and, like, shoot over the top of the chair? Yeah, you might get a better angle from that, so. It's an action shot now. No, I mean like that. Yeah, so I hand this one separately. Yeah. Those that are coming around are different. Were there two of these? Are the I'm giving out the other one. Oh, all right. You're giving out one scheme, I'm oh. giving out the other, and there's two sheets to each scheme. Everybody okay. have Okay, gotcha. All right, let's wait. So I'm not giving them what you gave. This is the attic scheme, and you're handing yes. out a different one. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sending that seal, by the way. That was perfect. Oh. Uh, and he's handing out the uh, floor plan and the site plan for the other option. So we call it one story site out. No, I just have something for construction. Did they get the site? <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, you got to give them a site also. Yeah. Yeah. We handed out the uh, site for the uh, attics. I think it might have just stalled here for it. Oh, there they are. Yes. Thank you. It was sitting here and taken to the noise. Let's just let's just let go with that. Yeah, there's two different ones. This one, this one, this one. First floor and one's the attic. Thank you. Uh, uh, I don't know how to use paper called paper. And this goes. <laughs> so these two together and these two will be together. Uh, exactly. Uh, attic side. No. Attic and attic. Okay. No, don't get those. No. Well, don't get the. I had two in my notebook. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are the any thing you want. I can grab some and then the safe one. Yeah. Do you already have the other one? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, there it is. Every should have everything. I'm going to just talk about the safe first. So you should have six handouts. Four will be 1117, and um, two packets will be eight and a half by 11. Just look at those two packets real quick at eight and a half, eleven. Yes. Okay. So the first, um, the thicker packet in eight and a half, eleven is the space needs assessment that we approved at the last meeting, with some changes uh, to the community meeting room. And and then the other packet that goes along with that is a room data sheet on the community meeting room. And it shows it set up two different ways. It shows it uh, set up for training, and then it shows it up for, which would accommodate 56. And it also set, shows it set up with just chairs for a community type meeting without tables that would accommodate se uh, 76. Uh -huh. And that's at a square foot, footage of 1350. 
So taking that room data sheet, plugging it into your space needs assessment, the thicker packet, uh, that was the one we approved at the last meeting and the one I worked off of today to do my space diagrams and my site plans. So it's down to like 15,000 kilometers. Yes. Does everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. And those of you as a key, so um, we'll continue on. So I took these spaces and I took the two schemes with version 1.5 of the space needs assessment, came up with a site plan and a program uh, relationship diagram for each one. So why don't we talk about the one story version first. The one story version first, you'll have an 1117 of it. You'll have the site plan and the space needs that goes along with it. So what you're seeing up here, you also have as a handout. So uh, this scheme explores building a retaining wall at the high side, making a relatively flat site that you could then develop a one-story building on. So what I've done here that's much different from last time is uh, we have worked the space needs diagram to bring the size of that big block down. Uh, you can see that it takes on a little bit of form and shows uh, more of a realistic size based on that floor plan which allowed me to move up on the site, yielding now a retaining wall that's only a maximum of six feet high, and the center then slopes down. The six feet for about this distance here, and then goes down to two feet on each end. Um, so um, it got much smaller than last time, which about, and that was because we could slide up the site. So just as a refresher, uh, after analyzing the site, you find that the site is very steep, uh, going up the east side of Memorial Drive, and not only is it steep, um, it's almost a ledge. Uh, after you get to this point here, it's just a complete drop off. So cutting into that and developing that would be relatively expensive and we'd need some more retaining walls there. So the building really wants to set up um, almost bisecting the 110 degree angle between Memorial Drive and Chase Road. And that's the scheme I developed here. Uh, very similar to the one I showed you last time. The site gets much more flat as you spread out this way, which is very conducive uh, to parking, parking area over here. So in this scheme, um, I developed a public parking area that could work as a drive through from road to road. And up upon thought, um, I developed a separate police entry with the thinking that uh, I had these two combined for one throat. Um, my concern there would be maybe a, a cruiser going out quickly and someone from the public at the same time, mm -hmm. and then you need another cruiser to come right behind it. <laughs> so um, I've developed a separated scheme in this one. So the public can have a drive-through and then a separate entrance for the police. I've developed it now as um, three separate parking areas, public parking, uh, cruiser staff parking towards the back, and then some overflow parking to the side over here. So three separate, and on all on both schemes, I developed uh, the drive-through sally port to come around and pick it up there. This uh, one-story scheme also has a wider drive because uh, in this scheme um, we have the impounded vehicle uh, right next to the drive-through sally port over here, which you'll see on the program um, on the program relationship board. The building's one story, first floor with an elevation about 181 with the street at 174. Uh, so with a public entry here and here, it goes from 174 to 80, so you're only dealing with about a six foot difference. But as you get up the hill, you can see it climbs fast. Uh, by the time you're right here, um, you're already 10 feet. And by the time you're at, across from the uh, second entrance to the police station, you're already 20 feet. So the key is to try to keep this entry as close to Chase Road as possible, or else you're dealing with a big grade differential. Uh, uh, both schemes uh, uh, would have the cruiser parking in the back here, uh, where the patrol staff would enter, and both schemes have the option for uh, a car port or a cruiser port that could come off the back to park them underneath with the remainder of the staff parking over here. You'll see that in the uh, space needs assessment, the uh, Separate from that 15,500 is a 400 square foot auxiliary building 
that would be for um, you can read on their storage of these things like we talked about um, and that's this guy over here which is 400 square feet coming over here you pick it up here there's the wetlands and I just I, I just offset a hundred foot buffer on my own um, which is um, fairly soon we're going to need some specifics on uh, the wells and these wetlands and we'll have to do some kind of soil testing so that we're not chasing something here that could be a dead end depending on where our septic might have to go, where the water table is, where these other wells are. So we'll need to do that real soon, uh, just as an aside. So, and then again, we talk about the idea of continuing Memorial Park into our site, where we'd set our flagpole up, and then a very strong access for the public into the building. So in a nutshell, that's the site concept for scheme, uh, for the one-story scheme. If we look at the program relationship diagram, it's color-coded. Public is yellow. Communications IT is an orangey color. Administration and command is green. Staffs. Um, I'm going to call. Um, I'm going to call patrol blue. I'm going to call staff support light blue. And I'm going to call investigative dark blue. And then detention is purple. Um, we don't have to get into it now, but we we took the. Liberty using some abbreviations to fit them on the space. I listed those on the side for you so when you're looking through it. So what this does is this takes the thick packet, the space needs assessment, puts it into picture form, and shows the relationships of the spaces in scale. In scale, and you can you can see that you know it's not resolved like a floor plan would be, but the relationships are correct. And any room that you'd want to have natural light would be on the outside wall. And um, anything that would want to be adjacent to each other is. And it's in scale. Uh, so after spending some time with, with this scheme in scale, uh, it is going to yield out at right around 15,000, I believe, um, in a floor plan. I'm not there yet where I can tell you yes, definitely, but that's where it's coming out uh, right now. The, the plan calls for 15,500. The difference would be the uh, net to gross multiplier, which that list is at 0.4 right now. So um, common in these two schemes is the main entry, which is here, coming down on that axis. And off the main entry, right off the main entry, when you come into the lobby, we have the main desk right on access. And then to the right would be the community room, which, or the room that could be used as a community room. And also directly off the lobby would be the public toilets. And it, um, the safe room or the public interview. That's what you're seeing in the yellow. Um, so then I also, we also dotted in what would look like a door swing and a wall. That would be where you could contain the public where they couldn't just roam free from walking in off the street um, into all this yellow. The archive room uh, would not be open to the lobby. That's just making some spaces work together to you know maximize the spaces that we have. So that would be the waiting area um, off the main entrance. In the green is command administration. Uh, starting in this corner here, we have the chief's office. These all kind of spin off the administrative area, uh, administrative uh, file areas and, and workroom. Uh, in this space, so we have the chief's office, uh, an administrative lieutenant's office, another admin's office, uh, a conference room. Um, to be used by the staff, a, a separate toilet area, storage, and a coffee area, and then would be a place for visitor waiting closest to the area where, where they would come in. It, also, I developed um, a command entrance where you could sneak in and out the side from the parking area without having to go through the rest of the building. That's what this arrow is over here. Now, in the center of the building, you can see that what's setting up here is a scheme where we kind of have a nucleus in the middle and white circulation space around it. So um, right in the middle of this space would be the orange communication dispatch with the main desk um, and everything associated with that, such as uh, a toilet and a break area so they wouldn't have to leave the area. Then all the IT um, network room work area and some closet storage. So all that IT 
uh, and communications is right in the center, set up with the main desk. Also in that nucleus, um, I'm working some staff toilets, some general building storage, a custodian storage, and on the very end, adjacent to the patrol area, is the armory and some weapon screening and some storage. So now skipping down to the staff entrance, which would come off the back, uh, coming right off the back would be the patrol area, which would consist of the, the squad room, the roll call room, uh, the patrol sergeant's office, report prep, the training and accreditation uh, office's office, and then this would be adjacent to a, a, a meeting or interrogation room that could be shared by the detectives, could be used by either department. That's why it's, it's colored both ways and split down the middle. And then the detective's office with the interrogation room, and we're going to have to work some um, safe file storage in and some equipment storage. Um, then up here is just any the, the white space, which I don't call out a color on the key. That's more just uh, mechanical, electrical, sprinkler, service type spaces for the building, um, and, and some archive storage. Now, uh, the staff support areas, which are what I call the light blue, mainly consist of the, a, a fitness room and a break room. So you can see the fitness room, and the fitness room is surrounded on both sides by the female locker room in the male locker room. This would give the ability of them to go right into the fitness room out of the locker room without going back into the hall. Then uh, the purple area is detention and prisoner processing. It's, it starts on the very end with the, the drive through Sally Port and this one this, this, this one story scheme has uh, the impound vehicle right next to it with some vehicle storage. Right off the Sally Port is a temporary holding cell. Um, somewhere in here um, could be an entry with a vestibule with prisoner release. Could happen. We, uh, a hot interrogation room, your cells, and um, the evidence storage room is at the very end, which would also relate to the patrol area and, and the other hallway. So the staff entrance would be down here. You could, uh, you could have an optional cruiser port here where you park your cruisers, and this is where you would enter into the building. The outside spaces for this scheme would consist of the auxiliary building we talked about, which is 400 square feet, and uh, an emergency generator. So that's the quick 3,000 foot view of the one story scheme and uh, how, I, how I did the general adjacencies and relationships for this scheme. Um, we can either stop and talk about this one or I can go on to the next one and then we can talk about both compared to one another, whatever you'd like at this point. Let's talk about them one by one. Sure. That way we won't get kind of confused. But let's start on the site. Um, I like the idea of the two uh, roads, one for public, one for police. I think the only thing we have to watch there is um, our distance between them. That's exactly right. You know, we have to make sure they're at least 100 feet apart. Um, so that configuration may change. I do like the layout a lot, though. It's very convenient. And, uh, does anybody have any questions on I actually do. Um, you have the combined right now the uh, what do you have? I mean, cruiser staff parking and overflow parking. Would you have those segregated with a gate of some kind of me 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 mechanical mechanism? Um, I, uh, so I, that people can't get to the cruisers from the outside? Yes. I, I think you would only have to use that infrequently because there's plenty of public parking. And I think that would only probably be used if you did decide to develop the community space and if you had a 70 person meeting. So would you gate that up by the street, or would you gate that down where that choke point is near your auxiliary building? Um, I, I think that we would probably find a way. Like I said, when we figure out exactly where this wetland, I tried to keep everything out of the buffer right now, just as a general rule. Um, we could develop this and probably have it so that um, um, you don't want to be, you, we'd have to, maybe there's even a bypass road so that if that shut off, the policeman can still travel by and get through. I think that might be the answer, um, but it would be a good idea 
to separate it or I think easier would be just to gate the sally port find a way to gate the sally port off on a night where there's heavy flow or overflow and that would, that would be maybe so well, the sally port is a natural barrier anyway when the doors are closed it's closed you can't go through right but you I don't know if you want someone driving down here yeah and then blocking the back it, out and, yeah so you'd probably block it off that way you could use signage there too and do the gate on the other side but you got yeah. There's plenty of parking for day to day here, even right. and, and even a moderate size meeting. So I, th I, th I think we'd really look at this and decide how many we need in the end. It's just um, you can see in scale how much is really available, which is quite a bit. I think, like Andy said, it, it, it could be used infrequently, so you could probably get away with just a manually operated gate, something that is, it doesn't need to be powered. Uh, so when it's in use, it's um, you know you can kind of walk out there and the police can close it off, something like that. Uh, well, I don't, I don't follow that. What do you mean? I, I think expense-wise, you don't need something that is a powered gate. That's what I'm saying. But the cruiser is going to be traveling in and out of the, through that gate every shift, every time they come in and out of the station. So to get out and open a gate manually in rain and snow and would be... Yeah, yeah, yeah I guess it depends on where you shut that off. If the cruisers are coming in to the Sally Port, um, but they're not all going to go through the sally port, are they? Is that what your no. design is? That no, 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 no. no, no, no. This it, could be configured a little bit. Yeah. This flow yeah, we're going to have to change. change that flow through there, right. right. That's why my, my question was, that flow through there, is that what you put, you're, you're proposing to choke through there? Yeah, I would propose that we choke off this, and then we could choke off this right. on a night where you maybe have a meeting. Right. Other than that, I don't think you'd have to. Okay. So some, you know, um, Definitely just something manual. And I can see, like you said, signage for the sally port saying do not enter, right. whatever, yeah. sally port, and then maybe a gate just with that choke is next to your auxiliary built. Auxiliary yeah. Building, yeah. Exactly. Yep. Well, even, even just on the public and the police, police entrance only and public entrance only, you could do that also. Yeah, well, he's shown on the plan as an, as an overflow for when there's a big meeting or whatever and you have more people parking there, you'd be able to do that. Oh, That's what my question was. Yeah. Yeah, front. that's the thing that kind of creates the issue is the overflow parking there where it's normally designated as police only. Police only, right. You'll get, I think that's where you'll get the confusion, but that can be working and Maybe on. you could hire a detail for that night. <laughs> Come on, oh, there we Park the car. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> How do you feel about, uh, now that we have that retaining wall um, a little lower, uh, the possibility of, you know, doing a having the site here be pretty balanced. You know, we are you know, probably going to have to cut down a pretty good amount to get this back end. You mean fill-wise? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. It, it and a you know, how much of that do you think we can use up front? And, uh, so so that's, a, about that's that a loaded question until we know if the material is suitable yeah. or not. So say, say it is, do you think it would be a pretty good opportunity to, to use a lot of that material yes. there? You, this could be a balanced site depending on the, the qualities of the soil. Yeah. Is there any possibility of putting the overflow parking on the opposite side? There could be, but as you get into this high grade, you're building a tall wall, and it's getting expensive. That the plateau is um, really conducive. Um, and I would think that so we got what? How many we got here? Like uh, I think it was like 14, seven times almost one, two, three, four, 28. You got almost 30 spaces here. What did you use for spaces? Did you use the town by law for spaces, or did you just use a standard? No, I think I'm. A, I use the twenty. I, I use twenty by ten. Okay, so that's is, fine. I think so we're nine by eighteen. Again. Yeah, we, you could even sneak another one in there. You, I think you're going to come close, and you could even get a few more here. You might become close to meeting it here. And not need this all. Not need that. Right. Yeah. So parking on the street is another option. That's right. right. Parking on the street, and then you would tell any, any, any people who are running the meeting, maybe the five, six, ten people, and have them park here. Um, and, and the, the general public just stays there and, and does not enter here at all. And I'm not even sure. Uh, personally, I like the overflow parking at all. We I could shrink just, that down, make that staff parking. I do, uh, yeah, I think that we take that whole thing away because, A, it's going to be really confusing. I mean, the reason why you made two separate um, driveways were, was for that reason. So now all of a sudden somebody has a call and you're using that for overflow, overflow parking. So that's just like... Through. We go through all yeah. that. 
You know, I think we take the overflow parking away and put it some, either make it disappear, use the street, or just try to expand it a little bit. Yeah, like, because I mean that's the reason why we have two driveways. Exactly. How big? How big is your parking? Uh, you right now, ten like, by twenty. The, no, the yeah, the overall size of the public parking. How many spots would you put in the public? Uh, I did. Uh, I took uh, seven times four because this is seven. This is seven. Uh, Twenty-eight, and it would that would go to thirty if you went to the. 9 by 18. Well, if you move the building back a little bit further, you could get a bigger parking lot in the front. No? Mm, only if you yeah. came higher up the street. And the higher you go up the street, the bigger differential you're going to get between them. But that you could, yeah, the you, answer to that is yes. I mean, you, you just could, have to see the trades off. You could almost get rid of the cruiser staff parking, make your overflow parking that cruiser staff parking, pull the building back, and make your front parking lot bigger mm -hmm. yeah. uh, to to pick up any of that community room. Yeah, so really if we're, if we're going to just drive down a little bit. Yeah, I think if we, if we design... Yeah, 70 people. If we design that front parking lot to um, to be able to hold, you know, the building occupants for, for 70 people, um, then we're, and we're not trying to put them into the overflow parking, it might be a little more... And, and you're, not going to affect the, you're not going to affect the slope. You're not going to have to dig up more land because hey, if you, kind of moving around. You, you move it over here, yeah. then the building can come back. Yeah. And you're still within that parameter. It would be nice to still have some parking along so the I, I, where we can do it. I guess the point work. is, um, I can explore other options for yeah. overflow. Sure. Yeah, you like you like the yeah. 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 But you do want the, uh, the ability to have the you know, covered parking. That could come down more. I mean, if they need to. It's just if we're, if we're designing a meeting area for at least 50 people seated, yeah, then we should have a parking spot. for at least for 50 people plus staff that's normally. So, yeah, I think. I think we said there's 15 up the road. And, like, and. Um, yeah. And you actually have some parking at the park. Those spots out front, right? Yeah. yeah. You actually could pull someone yeah. here, too, couldn't you? Yeah. As long as it's not a baseball game. We ran the rugby way. Hey, we won the championship last night. Congratulations, Congratulations, by the way. Congratulations. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at this also, Andy, too, and I know this design can change, um, but also from a site drainage perspective. And, you know, obviously the more impervious material we have, the, the more our site drainage number goes up. Um, so I think there's a way that we can almost make that front parking lot a little bigger um, and get staff parking maybe off to the side or um, still fit it on the same kind of plan you have but have enough parking up front and we're reducing our pavement. It could be an option. Yeah, if you reduce the rear just to cruiser parking and move the staff parking I on think. the side, on yeah. the side you <coughs> should... yeah. or vice versa. Well you want the cruisers to close to the where you get the layout. You don't want to have to run from oh, yeah. all the way across, you know? Yeah, <coughs> we can get some parking in here. We can even connect these up and then we just have one gate that's closed right. almost all the time. Right. You can almost slide your, your boundary here over a little bit and get some parking, like you just said, on the side of the building. Yeah, we'll just go here. So, uh, this is 186, 188. So, like, for instance, if you pulled it back to here, you go up three feet, you'd be looking at about a nine foot wall by the time you get to there. Nine to five, right? Because you were yes. at six to two. Yes. Um, Every foot we add to the wall is a lot more expensive. But exactly. Yeah, I think the spot you have the building is, is the perfect. Right. The way they build walls today. Yeah, the little segmented block. Yeah. And the and the fabric. Um, we're doing one this week, and it's amazing how much that's even changed since I started. And uh, I'm just a kid. <laughs> wow, we're all kids here tonight. There's no lock for it. 25. Yeah. 25. Yeah. 28. Just use the machines to set them now. Yeah. Any other comments on this plan? Happen. Want to go to the floor plan next? Yeah. I would just follow up, you know, what uh, Mr. Lightman Joe said about the staff entrance should be in relatively close proximity to three or four cruiser spots, you know, for the uh, the people working, you know, instead of having to walk across to a, where, the, the, where the overflow parking is on your uh, 
So, so, so the staff entrance here. Mm -hmm. You would want, you would definitely want the people that are working to have immediate access to the vehicles there, you know? Yeah, so that would be here? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then here. Yeah. as a general comment, you said this was around 15,000, 15, and so that's before, you know, this has been massaged, because I do right. see a lot of areas in here that could be within other areas. You know? Within other areas, but then we got wall thicknesses, Yeah. and I, I spent quite a bit of time, so I got a pretty good feel. Okay. And we're going to land right around 15, okay. because I just know we are, when it's all, when it does settle. So this but yes, you're exactly down. right. Um, Right now, it's almost, uh, I almost have to lay it out like worst case scenario, which is just yeah, it out. Yeah. And, you know, some of these spaces flow together. Absolutely. You know, like the water like sprinkler could be in the mechanical room, yeah, you know, exactly. things like that. that could, yep. okay. So, what I did is I took, um, we took every single space out of the space needs assessment, version 1.5, put it into a scaled piece, and put it on here. So, um, and, and at, as we massage it, they'll kind of blend together and work together. And flow, but right now uh, every space in that path is on here. This is still more or less an organizational. Yeah, this is a diagram. Yeah, this it's is not. This is a space diagram, but floor plane, but it's starting to shape. But up. it's starting to. Yeah, it's starting like, to shape. like for instance, this hallway is starting to be in scale, and you can see Things the circulation shape. path shaping up with like um, a, a center island of communication dispatch and spaces circulating around it. Um, and you can see how this is popping out to pick up the salary port and things like that. I guess I'd say to the PD, is there anything that pops out at you right away that no, we wouldn't want that next to each other or? Yeah, from adjacency or circulation. I, I mean, I know you're just looking at it. The yeah, first time, it, but. It, mm. it looks okay uh, in terms of the adjacencies. Um, how about that prisoner show? Okay, that's. Yeah, I don't know how that would fit in, but... Um, yeah. But, you, I mean, you'd be in the... You'd be locked in the holding facility and have to have access to that off of a corridor or something. You, you wouldn't be walking through the handicapped cell to get no. to the... No, no, no that's, 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 that's just that's kind of place. like... That should be there. So yeah. what, I, what I would picture is that uh, this... Uh, processing area with the intox and the custodial closet and the lockers, this would tighten up a little and it'd work its way into the space over That's here. Yeah. That's what would happen. So this is a general rendition. Yeah, this is what's yeah. called a program yeah. concept. It shows adjacencies and, and correct size and uh, it would show like um, you know, you'd want to make sure that, you know, for instance, the patrol sergeant's office is on an outside wall to get some natural light, and you want to make sure that it's adjacent to the proper rooms, things like that. So one of the things I just noted is um, within the holding, what appears to be in the holding facility, is your evidence drop and evidence processing. Usually, you wouldn't go into the holding facility to drop off your evidence. Yep. Yeah. Um, so that, I mean, you could, maybe the entrance to the holding facility could be moved back a little so that your evidence drop and storage was, uh, before entering. yeah, before entering. It almost needs its own color evidence. Yeah. Yeah. You can almost slide the handicap so, well, we can't be getting excited. Well, so I, those, those should be, well, those should be, those should be yeah, married to move this to, to here. This this in here. So yeah, if you, if, if that was married, you could, you would then enter it from the corner, yeah. which would be the yeah. intent. Yeah. You're yeah. actually almost segregating the lockup versus, like you said, evidence. Through, like through here? Yeah. Just to get your evidence away from your lockup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe put your um. so, but this is doing exactly what 
we want to, it's flushing out this mm -hmm. conversation. And now when we take a whack at it for next meeting, we'll, we'll certainly would have resolved that. And as, as we change other spaces, uh, things move around a little bit and it all comes together. But um, So the purpose of this diagram is to bring out comments like we're hearing. That best E70 square yeah. foot is the best of it, right? Same thing on yeah, the Yeah, that could be like yeah. a, a... So those are the walkouts? Yeah, like like a, like a man trap or... That's where you'd release the prisoner. The impound vehicle storage, that, the that would be inside of the, the building? Yes. That was just going to happen. You got a question on the status the offender room? Yes. Uh, okay, now what is that exactly? Um, if you flip to the packet, um, I think he described that almost like a non hard interrogation room. So, a, so usually a status offender, juvenile, can't be put in a a locked area, such as a holding facility or a cell within yep. the holding facility. Um, it's more or less like, you know, it's a room. You could certainly close the door, but um, maybe it's a poor analogy, but it's like babysitting yeah. until uh, a parent or somebody comes. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that placing it in the ho a locked holding facility, we may have some, um, some issues with that in terms of uh, juvenile compliance, et cetera. And I had a question about that space. Do you think that with you have an interview meeting room here, an interrogation meeting room by detectives, and then a public safe room over by dispatch, do you think it could be done in one of those rooms, that same purpose, and that space is redundant again? Or Perhaps, yeah. Basically what's going to happen is you get a babysitter. So they would stay in that room all day? Band. Yes. Yeah, okay. They would stay. Yeah. It can't be locked. And we, we hire a matron or a babysitter to come in. One of our officers has to come in and sit with them. So Probably they close can't to the dispatch and the public area. Yeah, it would be close to the dispatch. So that yeah. Not necessarily in a holding area. We currently use an interview room right now. It works out very well. But okay. And as far as any other juvenile, we could use one of the basic cells as long as they're certified. They're individual, they're sight and sound separated. So if we had a non-status offending juvenile, we could use one of those cells. So that shouldn't be a problem. All right, boss? Yeah. But so they can't be locked in then? No. Not for a status offense, like a runaway or... Right. Yeah, so you really don't want them in the lockdown area? No. We should just change that, where it's like categorized. Dispatch. I think you want them up front, close to the front. Somewhere, Somewhere. in orange or yellow. And you get some extra room here that's still hallway, well, unassigned room off to the left of your central core. Over, over here. Yeah. We're going to end up with quite a bit of space here once we figure it out. So I think that might be where you're at. Well, this, this room, somewhere, or I guess he might even have access to bathrooms that way, for a, so the lack of person can take him to the bathroom. Yeah, the, uh, in the program, switch summary says status uh, offender not in detention area near common, mm -hmm. com control, yeah, com control center, glass door, for visibility, things like that. So yeah, just move that. Yeah, I've seen it where it's a it's a glass door. It's not locked. And it's almost in view of dispatch. Mm -hmm. So dispatch is that person keeping an yeah. eye on them. They don't need to hire somebody to, to sit yeah. in that room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we'll keep it the same color. Yeah, exactly. So if an, so if the officers are going to be um, using photocopiers, staplers, papers, supplies. 
in, in, in need of a small work area. <coughs> Would that be incorporated into the report preparation? That's what I, I, okay. Yes, for sure. All right. Yeah, that'll be an all-in-one place to get your report done. Quiet space. Yeah. And then up in um, the area of the chief and lieutenant, that would be probably in the workroom, something like that, or admin office? Yeah, so this space here, um, we've got some space here where we would um, have the supplies um, and some and, and a copy area. We've got a work area uh, off the file room. It would, it, that, we would have another copy area up in that space there. What's the difference between the work area and the work room? Um, the work room, I think that the administrative assistant is going to be, um, she's the one who, hand, who handles the archives a lot. Yeah. So uh, I think that the difference, um, I, it was a program space that I took right off the program. And I, I think the differentiation is, is that this work area is just mostly going to flow into the admin space, whereas this is going to be a separate room. Yeah, that's what it says. The work area accessible by the administration system. Okay. So that again might just be some area that needs to be massaged into one. What's the difference between the two archive areas? We have one in the administrative area and then one over in the white area. Yeah, so. Um, the record archives, I, th I think it's really just her working with archives and then this just being a storage area for older files. But I think that um, Michael tried to make a relationship between working on yeah. these files and, okay. and older files stored somewhere else. And I think you, I think you might have mentioned that some of those are in, you're in the scanning process yes. of trying that's, to get those reduced. Yeah, that's, that's a slow process right now. Because um, of some personnel issues, the town vacation sickness illness. But we'll look at the The records are almost like someone doesn't need to go into it all the time, but it's there. Yeah, I, 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 I would say that's accurate. Yeah. The other one we're using, that we were talking about using those high density shelving. So that's going to be an active. Yeah, so you'll, you'll, you'll see in the attic scheme, I moved, I moved the record archives up to the attic, and I kept. The green, uh, the green archives. I mean, you, you down you the get to do it a little extra. Yeah, in your archives, Hanya, although that means your program, it says rotary, high, the uh, what they, high density yeah. files are in the archives, where the other right. ones like the file and cabinet. It's just a big open. Yeah, so, yeah and a lot's going to be electronic, too, in the future, too. Well, that would be in the other one, yeah. The white mm -hmm. one, white records archives. Yeah, one is more storage, the other one is more. Looks like a lot. It, it is. Well, that's have you seen the container? That's what we have our records. Yeah. That's what it's I've been in it. Maybe you showed it to me. Oh, that's right, yeah. How does the department impound vehicles now? You guys in indoors, or do you have some So what happens is, you know, I'll give you an example of a recent incident. A person hits a pedestrian. We need to secure that vehicle. We need to search it for evidence, check brakes, you know. Put it, put it on a computer to get the uh, information. We don't tow it to the state. We have no place to secure that vehicle. Mm -hmm. So we will call a tow company and hope that they can secure it in a, a secure area. Or, but that secure area could be a, a locked gate in the parking lot. It could be. It could be. It doesn't need to be inside. Well, it does for well, a while. Well, it, it does for, it depends on how you, if it, you don't want to process a vehicle in certain types of weather, rain, snow, humidity, sure. yeah. et cetera. So you would need, uh, in this particular case, your accident recon people would come out, examine the vehicle. In other situations, you may want to fingerprint the exterior, the interior. Um, the, the other thing is, when we, have a when we seize a vehicle and we have it towed to somebody else's lot, in theory, we are exposed to paying the storage fees, et cetera, yeah. okay? We've gotten around that, and the, the owners have paid, but that is, that's a serious issue as, as to whether the owner of the vehicle should be paying or not. Um, so the present system is not a good system, 
And I think we really need a, a place at the police station where we bring this this vehicle temporarily to be processed. Okay. How, how I envision this one is it's basically like a double bay space with a cage or a chain link between the two. It, it's like a, it's like a step by step. It's a two step process. You're using that space temporarily until you can get it out. Of right. You've completed your your evidence. Right. We would uh, notify the owner. Either pick it up, you know, within a day or two, or a tow company is going to take it, and you're on the hook. Right. Yeah. And almost, yeah. and just like a, a, a cage type separation between yeah, the two. So. Yeah. Nothing. And ju I'm just always looking at the, the dollars, and I've I've seen impounds, you know, outdoors, you know, before. Yeah. Well, you said you don't have too many at once. Yeah. So. I mean, it's, it's, it just it depends on how you do the process. Yeah. yeah. That outbuilding might, depending on the size, and if there's a garage there, you could probably use that. Well, um, could you process it in the Sally Port and then once you're done with processing, store it outside until pick well, up? Well, if you have it in the Sally Port and then a prisoner needs to be, right, it's yeah. going to be an obstruction. Yeah. Could, could it, a separate building be the impound? Well, I, that's what I was just alluding to, that exterior building. That may very well we add on to uh, accommodate our vehicle. Yeah, it could just be a simple bay you pull into and has a garage door on it, and that's it. Yeah. 400 square feet is 20 by 20. So a little small for us. Yeah, we'd have to get a little bigger. Yeah. Not much. And if you want to store things in it, then you'd have to take everything out when you want to bring a vehicle in. If you're storing your ATVs and your... So you could do like a, a two-star garage can comfortably be 24 feet. And then 24 deep, or so you get, yeah. you, you know, you're close. You want to make that a little bigger. If that yeah, was going to be the I, I, nothing, nothing fancy, just to get that that vehicle in there. You know, and right. are you thinking the auxiliary building is being some like a space metal building? Or, Could or, be. Or yeah, light, I know. Light uh, construction. What light was the, the plan I just looked at? Um, was it Orleans? They had an exterior building that was or, a space. Orleans has a metal building. Yeah. Is there? But it's the same thing, impound area. Yeah, I think it, I think you're right. It was Orleans, and I think it matched the colors of the. Yeah, yeah that that didn't seem like a bad idea. So you, so how much would you be saving, do you think, uh, in terms of the, if you eliminated that from? If you loft this off. Yeah. In terms of square feet. Of space, so, um, two eighty. Uh, and as long as this didn't have to get a lot larger, because you're doing it, but I would say that this construction would be uh, at least half of this construction. Agreed. If not more. Yeah, we did the analysis in Lakeville, because um, we're using a, an outbuilding there, and the construction for the outbuilding is about half of the cost per square foot as it is for the main building, um, based on the type of construction we're using. So. The idea was, you know, like same thing we're doing here, by getting our storage items outside, you're paying less for that storage or it's cheap area rather than having it in the building. So yeah, there is definitely a trade-off. I, I would agree with Andy. It's, you know, pretty close to half. What's the square foot cost that we're, we're expecting? <laughs> <laughs> That's a loaded question. No, I mean, I, what you, I mean I'm, I'm asking from your ex, expertise and other buildings. What do you figure? Like you're doing Lakewood, you must have an idea what. I think right cost. now, um, safe all in is yeah. around five hundred and fifty dollars a square foot. Five hundred fifty dollars a square foot. That's like yeah. everything. That's everything. Yeah. So on a, on a fifteen thousand square foot building, you multiply that by five hundred and fifty. Yeah. Okay. So the two hundred and eighty would be a significant. Oh yeah. Savings, since that's going to be half the place. Sure. Okay. I get it. Yeah. It wouldn't be dull, dull because the sites are into that number is all your site work and all that, and that's not going to necessarily change your retaining walls. Not going to change all that stuff. No, not no, change, no. Just a slight slap off. Yeah, you slap off. Yeah, it, the reason it's a loaded question is because every site's different. Yeah, I get it. So, but that's you know pretty much how the market's going right now. And we really have to pay attention to this site because of the slope. Right. We have drainage. Could get expensive. What are you uh, What are you seeing from this building on that? Um, around 350 to 375. Okay, that makes sense. So that's you. That's a benefit to you. That's without site work. That's without that's site work. Without site work. That's that's building. Yeah, but so. you're going to have site work anyway. You oh yeah. Have site work anyway, so that would be yeah. a fit. So 300 to 350. Yeah. 
Many things are similar as far as the site goes. Uh, <coughs> public parking, uh, in and out on uh, each of the streets. I uh, used a separate police entry here. The big difference in this scheme is our first floor footprint has gotten smaller because I've taken some of the program spaces and put them in what I call the attic. And the attic is accessed, you can drive up and into the attic with a vehicle. Um, you can also, uh, you know, walk in there through a pass door, or there's a stairway. Um, I developed one stairway on the inside. So on, on this scheme here, it really only yields uh, uh, one dock corner that's completely um, filled with grade, and then the retaining walls would come off like a pinwheel. Uh, those retaining walls, uh, you would have less footage of retaining wall, well, maybe about the same, but they would be higher. Those would, those would have to get a little higher. To, um, but we would want to leave this whole side filled with light and this whole side filled with light with the patrol entry. So these two pinwheel retaining walls making a drive up attic that you'd be able to drive up into, taking advantage of the rise in the site that way to get in. Um, then this would also eliminate that outbuilding. We, we would try to eliminate that outbuilding by doing any spaces up above here. Um, much of the other stuff is the same. So if we um, Go to the floor, uh, the program. The, uh, I call this the attic program concept. Um, you know, uh, we'll go through it. The first, what I did, what I did here is, I didn't want to assign a square footage to this one yet. What I did is, I, I, I did a square footage difference, and the difference, if you, if you, if you, if you add the uh, auxiliary building to that one. Um, the first floor plan, or the first, the, the footprint on the first floor is 2,594 square feet less. Okay, and that's not that's not all free space. But even if it cost half of the 550, you know, you're what approaching a half a million dollars maybe uh, uh, there. So um, um, this could maybe make this first floor 2,500 square foot less. Now what I did is, um, the front of the building uh, and the main entrance and the community and CA area is, is the same in these two schemes. Uh, sets up nicely with the corner lot and how the parking works. That's all the same. Uh, communications and dispatch is, is virtually the same. On that strong access, the main desk right in front to collect the people when they come in. Um, what changes is, one of the big changes is, is that um, the staff support areas uh, for one, have been moved up to the attic. The, um, uh, vehicle, uh, the vehicle impound has been moved up to the attic where you'd be able to drive in. Uh, that uh, garage building, or the auxiliary building is up there. Um, the record archives, the mechanical room, uh, maintenance equipment and supply, and um, general building storage. Each, sto each space still has its own storage for closets and office supplies, but general storage has brought up. So this would represent, you can see the stairway that we drew in, in scale, and you can locate it up here. This would represent uh, this area being used as attic space to get that uh, $2,594. So there could potentially be some pretty significant savings by using this so-called attic space. The other thing that the attic space could be used for is maybe uh, future build out. If the budget didn't allow some rooms that maybe could be built out later, it would be a great way to separate that future build out. And instead of putting an addition on, you know, all, all your site work's done, you're just starting a build out in a finished space. Uh, so it, it, it could get pretty interesting. So again, the focus on the spaces that went up is the staff support, um, the uh, impound, and the auxiliary space building, that 400 square foot. Uh, you know, records that you don't need to get to frequently, of course, would go up there. The mechanical room, the maintenance, uh, supply and equipment, and the general building storage. Again, you would still have storage within each space for, for yourself. Um, of course, the uh, processing and sally port stays where it is. Um, on the first scheme, the staff entrance stays where it is. Um, so many similarities. Um, 
except the big move is the staff support area and the auxiliary building moving in there. What I see the word pneumatic, but the first thing I think of is an old fashioned house where I grew up with a rat. Yeah. I mean, certainly, anything that you put up there is going to be finished off the same way it would be under the first. Part. Absolutely. Yes. So it's not really an attic, it's going to be usable space finished the same way. Yes. Okay. Yes. How much square footage do you think, you know, in roughly that we have to work with in that attic? Do we have to work with? So it's. Uh, Nine. What's nine times nine? Eighty-one. Eighty-one. And um, let's see. So eighty-one. So actually, I should say nine times. Let's get. This is about an eighth. So nine times eight is seventy-two. And so say say it's about eighty by eighty. <laughs> yeah. Eighty by eighty. What space? Eighty foot by eighty foot space. It's a good amount of room. And, and, and again, well, it's probably it's 100 going the other way. So you look at about 8,000 square feet. Yeah, 8,400 to 8,000 square feet. Yeah, that's a lot of space. Of extra, of extra no. <laughs> now, in light, and in light frame construction, <laughs> in light frame construction, you're you're basically sliding this space in under the same foundation and roof. Yeah, right. This most likely wouldn't increase your foundation for the, for the kind of building materials we're using, and the roof wouldn't change. So basically, you're lifting the roof and sliding more space. So all you're paying is extra foot walls. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. why one it's always cheaper to go up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And um, the the key would be to put spaces that wouldn't dictate yeah. an elevator. Right. And also that how it's lined up, noise, vibration. Yes. yes. How does that room. impact the the rooms underneath it? You know. Right. So. Um, uh, if we do any kind of garage or impound vehicle space, it, it will certainly be some kind of uh, concrete system and, and then probably another concrete topping on top of that. So that would take care of that one. And then something like the fitness room, we'd want to make sure that, um, you know, like I, now I got it over like evidence storage. Yeah, that, that could be over the lieutenant's room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Um, but, 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 sorry, child. Yeah, you, you would do some of it by placement. He doesn't care anymore. So in other words, when they drop the barbells, it won't go through. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not for a few years. At least. Yeah. Now, first two. Are we you could putting put it over the cells, the oven, like yeah. stuff? Yeah. Are you putting? The, is it going to be a full second floor? Because it seems like it's only the core here that's the second floor. Right. Are you roofing off? I don't. I, I want. I wanted. I, I, um, my vision of the front of the police station is a one-story building with a slope roof. And then a slope. And then we'd, we'd go into that. Like and then, a hip roof? Yes. So I, I, um, yes. So it, um, I don't envision a two-story building even if we do the attic skin. Mm -hmm. it, that's why I kind of call it an attic. You gain your attic as you move back into the hill. Yeah, Could but you yes. Yeah, yes. Dig in. Exactly. Yeah. When you think of this building, I mean, really, truly, like this building, you could access and all. I mean, if, if it was strong enough, you could drive it. What kind of what kind of in the attic? Yeah, well, yeah, it's the same first scheme. floor yeah. is where you walk in. Is, so I but drove that up. feels like a basement, you know. So we wouldn't want the. Well, they 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 gave that a whole dock side. Right. Here we just got yeah. this. Yep. Uh, that corner. Yeah. That little corner. Just this one little area, and then this whole side's open because of the retaining wall. So. It's just that one corner. Mm -hmm. So that road's actually going around our retaining wall. So what? The, the road. That road goes up around the retaining wall. Comes up here like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very yeah, similar to this one. Yeah. Like this does really. Yeah. You Would you it. need a retaining wall? Could you do a soft slope into the road you, like a... You, you'd probably lose too much light. Okay. And, and uh, you, it would have to be pretty steep. You're better off at that point just putting it in. And um, Retaining wall construction has changed. I didn't know if you just because you're pushing it back so far with that other road, whether you could do an uh, almost swale. Uh, you could, you could, and use the road as a bu uh, buffer you, you between. You could do a lot of that. You'd just be losing a lot of light on your first floor spaces as you're losing it. That'd be the that'd be the problem. That'd be the trade-off, I should say. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it'd be a big cut because on this, I don't know what degrees it is, but on the left side, say, you're cutting into a lot more material. You, you get real steep here quick, right? The, the more light you have in the building, the better off. No, I, I was just thinking, the further you put your 
where this road is already way back here, you're already making this cut anyhow. Yeah. So if you took the retaining wall out, you put the road closer to where the retaining wall is and you have a slope. So it goes from one elevation and gently slopes yeah. into the ground elevation that they are cutting to. And then you would have to vegetate it so it doesn't wash or run. Yeah, so either rip wrap yeah. or vegetate it. <clears throat> retaining wall technology where it's at today, these walls that I'm showing you here really are no big deal. And they're very conducive to radiuses. Right. It, it, it really doesn't even cost extra to do a radius with these blocks. You can just, they just move and it's, it's really good. Uh, it's come a long way. Andy, um, just yeah. maybe a suggestion about with the attic uh, program. You, you still, I know you still have it. It's the same mirror as the first floor. But like the sergeant, the supervisor, detective corner there. Yes. It's got to be dark, correct? Mm -hmm. No, this is all, this all and, has light. And, and then the, the light mirror. picks up again by this guy's office here. So the only patrol sergeant's got? Well, it, but no, it, but so the, the, the patrol sergeant's office, 375 square feet, it's got a wall that big, all with windows in it. So it's only training, training, training and renovation office. No, there are no dark, there are no dark offices. Just this wall, right? Yep. That's part of the patrol office, but he has a wall. Yeah, I know what you're saying now. So you're not one wall is docked, but the other wall is open. Yeah, yeah, just like you know, it, 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 yeah. the only thing you lose is is yeah. the, the corner aspect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering because I was wondering if you might yeah. stick the evidence area in that corner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Patrol yeah. supervisor's office. Yeah. The evidence. Yeah. You certainly could do that if yeah, if, that way if, 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 if if it's agreeable to uh, yeah. you guys. Sure, just, sure. Just a thought. Yeah, I have to have a starting point. Oh, yeah. This is what I came yeah, up yeah. with. Now I need yeah. your feedback. I, I really like the idea of using that space effectively. You know, you have a few areas that are called just future general build out. I know a lot of it's circulation space, but I I bet there's some other areas we can get up there too. Yeah, like the you, sprinkle of water service, the electrical room. Yeah, I don't like electrical rooms up there. Uh, they're much more conducive to on the first level. Well, I, I was thinking um, the computer network room. You get that right over your dispatch yes. room. Then your antennas come into the network room. You know, yes. And, right then, and, and right one, one thing I got out of one of our meetings is um, what, what, we, what we would have to watch for is, is we could put a door into the stairway so like a vendor could go right up to that equipment without having to go through being the whole station. But, mm -hmm. you know, nice. we could... Uh, Mm -hmm. We could bring them in right through here. Yeah, separate right, entrance. Bring them up, and it could be right at the top of the stairs. Yeah, I, I'm just looking at that area. The attic level is bonus. I think anything we can get up there um, and get away with not having to put an elevator in is huge. One of the things I, I think we ought to look at, though, is moving that break room down into somewhere near the patrol area. Yeah, because so. Because we're on the second floor, and if the officers are going to be in off the street on a break, and we're going to go and answer a call. Now you've got to run down the front stairs yeah. through the building to get back to your cruisers outside. Right, so I, I did think about that, and it's a good idea, but um, also, too, there's some other small break rooms throughout the building. Yeah. Like there's a kitchenette off the EOC community room. Yeah. There's another coffee break area in the command administration. Um, there's another uh, break area within the dispatch. They have their own. So um, I was thinking that this... Um, and you could put a coffee area around the patrol area. This would be more of like if you're going to hang out a little bit, if, you know, if you're working out and, you know, you want to get a drink, and that would be more of that kind of thing. But then there's other, those smaller type yeah, rooms yeah. dispersed throughout the building. One in the orange. Yeah, that's the one so that the dispatch has a bathroom, yeah, a locker, a and a break room. The small green area. Yeah, well, the dispatch is going to be closed off. Yeah, it's a dedicated right. patrol right. office. So we're not going to be hanging in the right area. Well, then, isn't there one in the green area, coffee? I think, I think my gut would be that that splits in half. And half kind of comes downstairs and half goes upstairs. You know, not so, um, you well, know, really not function-wise, but yeah. space-wise. Would yeah, you well, I'm thinking I was, but if we're we going to do it call. like we do now, we eat lunch exactly. and eat in there. It's there are many restaurants in Freak Yes. Yeah. Uh, so basically, we eat our meals here. And if you're going to be responding, we also have to respond to calls during lunch hour. Yeah. So 
that's so we got we got plenty of room over yeah. here. Okay. Bring it down near. No that's problem. That, that's my contention. You know, that's yeah. the yeah. issue. Live it. You move IT. Uh, some of the IT stuff you got plenty of room for. Yeah. yeah. No, and I was I was thinking the exact thing, same thing. And my rationale was, well, we've got a bunch of individual spaces. But you're oh, right. Yeah. If you right yeah. you want yeah. to yeah. sit down, yeah. because yeah. 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 behind yeah. communication. Yeah. And there's a coffee one in the green. So would would you envision that then down? Maybe around roll call? Is yes. that where the guys come Somewhere in the roll call, call room. Sort of. One of the things you want to avoid is placing the break room next to um, administrative or um, where public have access to right. because people are on a break, they're, on, they're relaxed, there may be some laughter. You, you know what I'm saying? It might be an occasional four letter word gets thrown here or there. <laughs> The word, no, you, you the, word, the word love? Love, no, yes. I, I thought that's what you're talking about. <laughs> um, was there a reason why these spaces were located where they were? Yeah, the so like they probably said. Yeah, because yeah, you, you're, you're going to want them near a street. Yeah. Because yeah, if you're going to pull the power off the street, you want them to run. It should be the blue area. You just want to go to each other. It is prime real estate. And is there a way to put in maybe um, up by the quarter mass yeah. storage is there a way to put in a, an elevator shaft without putting on the mechanical so if we do want to someday go and, and use that space yes. upstairs yeah so what you'd want to do is put the pit in and then you can even just build over the pit but that's really all you need and then uh we put the pit in and then the ceiling and or the floor framing we just frame and open it just frame it and that way you, you just open the framing up and you have the shaft and just put mechanicals in yep where would you use that? I kind of looked at the quarter master storage area. By that stair. By the stair. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that could still be a stair storage area because it's a shaft that's usable. And right. it's a good place for it because as you're constructing your stair, right. um, you know, you'd want to construct that, that, that shaft too. Who's chef? chef? Is that for in case you need it? In yeah. case we want to upgrade to an elevator down oh, the road to put something okay. public up in the second floor. I mean, there's an awful lot of room on the second floor. Yeah, that's it's. I'm really impressed with this. 8,000, 9,000 square feet. 8,000? 8, 8,000. Yeah, between yeah, 6 and 8? Yeah. That's sweet. But it makes the footprint small. Right. It helps you in a lot of, a lot of places. So, did you say when you did the calculations, it's roughly 2,500 square feet less than the yes. other concept? This, this footprint yields 2,500 square feet less or well, uh, almost 20 it's really more like 26, 2600 than this one plus the auxiliary the 400 square feet so without the auxiliary it's around 22 so that's just the footprint design including the attic program space well all you really all you really can compare is the two first exactly. right yeah. so we're, we're saving about 2600 i mean right. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So slab and on roof you're saving 2600 yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah exactly yes. yeah we have to build a roof anyway yes. so right so um, my thinking would be is if you use those numbers, right? Say say this cost, say this is half the cost of this in the end, and you apply those numbers. Yes, a little, little bit of money. Yeah, yeah, it, it steps in the right direction. Right. Where, where are the uh, did I miss it? The area for like custodial materials for cleaning and. You'll see some uh, cust C U S T C U S T distributed C -C throughout C different areas. The custodian. Custodian. Being a supply of top two. There's one in the um, purple. Yeah. C U S T right area. next to the status yeah. offender. Oh yeah. Yeah. And there's another one somewhere. Okay, else. I see a little bit. Yeah. In closets. Yeah, so, for coats and everything else. Yeah, so there's a there's a coat closet over here. You'll see. Then there's a supply closet over here in the green. Every every different color has storage area built were you, into it. Were you going to do closets in the offices? Built closets what? in the offices, or are you thinking with a coat closet? Wardrobe? Yeah, or a wardrobe. Uh, uh, yeah, the blue area. Is there one in the blue area? Which in those blue, areas? light blue, or dark blue? A lot of times it's okay. It's Patrol, sergeant. I guess it's yeah, the lighter blue. Yeah. I mean, with 375 Lightable. foot square footage, you could build in a small coat closet. Yeah, but lots of times, you know, sometimes yeah. they put You have to look at the room data sheets. We have enough room, yeah. So um, if it's not specifically listed, and um, I would say yes, you're going to. Yeah, will. I mean, that's really important. Otherwise, you're going to mess all the time. Right. Yeah, but you also have to know. You're absolutely right. You need a uh, place where guys come in. Yeah, and the exactly. That's and what hang I up their coat. Coat but closets and, and supplies for custodians right, and. Also, the uh, the locker room is going to be for their 
regular stuff. They'll have a locker. All their personal stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So the locker. But the people today, who work at the dispatch, they need a. Uh, yeah, I don't know they if they lockers, they use the locker or. Yeah. I see their lockers. Yeah. What were you going to say, Chief? I was just going to explain the lockers today are big enough to hold jackets and, and uniforms. There's heat and ventilation in them. There's electric power for flashlights and charging portables. Um, usually something underneath for their mm -hmm. footwear. So most of the people would be putting their, uh, hanging their stuff at, in those locations. But you were referring more to what, the, the offices I'd themselves? Like if yeah, you, well, you they would be in your locker. Yeah, well, if if he's if they've got if they get a call and they've got to run to their locker, get their coat, and run no. out. No, where do they keep it? Well, Usually, the, when I keep mine, it's in the cruiser. Yes. Uh, that's know, a, if it's raining or whatever. Uh, yeah, I mean that's why I keep my stuff when I'm working. It's in the car. I think the offices, the offices may have actual closets in them, or the other way, you know, it's not. It's just they have a wardrobe. So does the committee want um, to continue working on this concept? Do you want to just work on both of them at the same time? Do we have more of a like or dislike for any of them? Well, it, I, it seems in either of the plans, you, you know, you, you're fulfilling the mission and all of the elements we talked about. Um, if the attic program concept is substantially cheaper for the taxpayers, substantially, you know, <coughs> than the one-story program, it would seem to me we would be gravitating toward that. Um, I think future yeah. expansion along the <coughs> that's a big, that's yeah. that way. And, 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 to that, that's why we were initially talking about basement, right? Because right. we were looking, what are we going to do in the future, right. you know? But what I hear tonight is the attic will provide that, and then uh, Robbie brought up putting a, uh, a shaft in at least right. in case uh, we need to meet ADA compliance and, and expand that and exploit that area in the attic later. Um, that's yeah. my, uh, I agree, and I think basically with everything the Chief said, with, with some some modification as we go on. Yeah, I think as we work through this should probably be the model that we go with. I think that you're just mostly squaring off everything right. into program. Mm. Yeah. Right. So I think this will all that you know, you take this home out. and you start to look at it, you're yes. gonna start it's thinking, Oh mate, plan. this is gonna go yeah. here better and right. things like that. But um, instead of focusing his energy on both, I think that if if we're ready I think we should just kind of hone in on one or the other. And sometimes I feel like we're moving too fast, but I think that our heads are right where it should be, and I think that why waste our time if we already know that we're going in that direction. What would be the major downsides, if any, to the attic program? I, I don't think there's any major downside. If, if you're comfortable with the separation in running the building, if you're comfortable with what spaces are up there, and um, you know you're gonna have. A, I think having a one level separation is fairly good for some things, and it's a it, you know it's an efficient use of the space. Um, the downside could be noise um, above you. Okay. Which you could do. A little extra mechanicals too, right? Which we deal with. You'll have a little bit of extra mechanicals to run two heat two spaces instead of one uh, and giant. Space maybe place. not with the type of systems we use today. Yeah, so we use a lot of small multiple systems and big. Like years ago, this might have had a huge furnace with a big trunk this running out. It, it's not going to be that. If you use the VRX yeah. system, yes. it's the same as. Right, exactly. I, I only see <coughs> pros. Yeah. The attic. Gym and stuff is I think you're, I think you're limiting yourself and, and the building's potential after everybody's gone with the one, one story. Right. You're, take, you're, you're taking um, a, a possible liability to the, of the site and turn it into a positive by using the other attic. I'll make it as a motion that we accept the attic plan. All right, so I yeah, with modification as we go along. Right. And this, is, this is not set in stone. We can no, always circle concept. back if right. we think we went right. down the This is path. just a concept. But instead of having them work in two directions and, yeah, and have right. twice available, no, I, I think we say we go with this because this is the best. Yeah, yeah. perfect. I'll appreciate it. So I have a, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I want to ask one question. Go ahead. You definitely can deal with the 
with the, any noise, without issue, right? Yes. We're not going to end up where the chief is saying to us, hey, there's too much noise upstairs. No, we'll be cognizant of that and we'll do it by what space we put over, but what space and uh, sound deadening. We put, uh, this is, what we do is no matter what, um, I don't know what material we'll be using for the floor yet, but we'll construct the floor and we'll be putting a membrane on top of that and then we'll be pouring a concrete topping over that. And then in the workout room, we put um, uh, mat flooring everywhere. Yeah. Do you have um, a question? No, I'm okay. going to give you right. a motion. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Do you have a direction? Chief, I don't know if you know the, the chief in Norwell, um, Ted Ross. I've, sp I've spoken to him on the phone a, a while ago. Yeah, uh, we did a two-story solution for his um, department, and they loved it. Um, he hasn't had any issues with sound and much like that. So. They actually put all their offices on the second floor, and all their um, line functions on the first floor. Yeah. Well, that's interesting, too. Other stuff. So, like, so the lieutenants, the sergeants, chief, deputy chief, everybody's upstairs, and then all the line functions are downstairs. Yeah. Especially if the administrators could be go upstairs, because you know, so you run up with food as well. Yeah. Yeah. If you if you wanted to, I could. I could reach out to him. We could do a tour. Or, I mean, it's, it might be nice to see because it is kind of the same same function. I mean, I can see why you necessarily wouldn't want to leave the, the corner where you go upstairs and isolate yeah. yourself upstairs either. You'd have to come downstairs to them because yeah. it's not 88 to one. I think the yeah. fin is. Yeah. Really we, it did require an elevator, though. Yeah. I think the fin is from upstairs is so upstairs. smart. You take it away from that area and you put it upstairs, and then no one can ever, you know, say anything. Well, you they don't like having it off the floor. Right. 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 Uh, Lisa, to kind of understand where your budget is now. So we went through and we populated what we felt are going to be your costs in phase one, and also some costs in you know phase two of construction. So for this phase one uh, portion, we understand you're working with a budget of seven hundred and fifty thousand. So what we did was we went and plugged in our knowns and um, also some unknowns. I'm sorry. Can you get Allie on camera, please? <laughs> <laughs> no, she moved too fast. Thank you. So just moving down the list here, obviously we don't have any construction costs at this time, so we didn't fill in any, any that information until we do some estimates. But uh, so moving down, we have our architectural engineering fee. That's just the CGA contract. We did plug in estimated reimbursables. That's a, 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 a number we typically carry on projects. We have, then we've broken up for construction, um, which is in the second phase of CGA's contract. Moving down to um, our fee uh, for design, for our portion during phase one, and then our portion during phase two. Commissioning agent, if we were to hire one, they typically do some upfront work, about $5,000 up front, $15,000 on the back end. Um, that's probably even a little high. And we do have the land survey fee done by Kelly. Now that's at 32.9, and that's with the additional um, requirements that uh, CGA has asked for for some survey work, and they all have, also have to flag the wetlands. Are we making progress on, on that? Or? So I have their proposal here tonight. Oh. We we just got it, and I want to get a, a, a uh, approval on it. So <clears throat> to this point, um, Kelly has um, or Kelly has billed 18,960. So what's not in that number is $2,408 for the flagging of the wetlands, which was in their amendment number two, which the committee approved back in March, if you remember. 
So for them to do um, the additional work that CJ has asked for for different um, survey points um, on the plot, it's an additional $7,500. So that brings their total to $28,868. Um, you'll see here it's $32,900. Um, that's actually because I just got hard numbers from Kelly today. We were doing some estimating um, last week when I put this together, and I want to be on the high end. So you're actually saving you know, $3,000 and change. So I would like to give Kelly the approval to move forward. Um, I believe their initial contract was not to exceed $20,000, uh, but then the amendment was added to that, and now this is Amendment 2 of the 7500 So um, it's basically an overage of $8,868.91 to Kelly's contract if we were to approve them to move forward. Mm -hmm. What's the board's pleasure? I think we have to do it. Yeah. I agree. I mean, we want to move the site plan and we want to move forward. So. Second. 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 Discussion. Go ahead. Does that sound like a reasonable number? The 2200 to flag the wetlands? I thought it was a little high, um, but it's already in what they what well, part of so, their so, uh, approval. He's going to flag it with yeah. a botanist, and then is, is, is he going to, um, is that number guarantee that he then works with the commission to, it's approved by the commission, or is he just going to flag it and run? And then he wants more money to come out. And, um, yeah, it's, yeah. So it's we Conservation Commission. We want to make sure that uh, he flags it. They might move him when they look at it, right? And then they got to agree. And then um, make we're going to make sure that includes that he not only flags it, then he comes out and tags it and transfers it to his plan after conservation approves the line. From what I understand, it was going to include that, um, but I'll be sure because he doesn't spell that out. They call that picking up the flags. Yeah. After they've been approved by that, they come back out with the survey crew, pick them up, and get them right on it. Because if you know, yeah. if the approved line ends up here, but our plan shows here, that's going to match what we're working with. It also sets your buffers because your hundred your hundred yeah, foot exactly. buffers could move. Yeah, right. So we're going to make sure that uh, that gets us to an approved line from the commission, the Absolutely. local conservation commission. Um, wells. Remember, we we've got to have those soon. We, you know, we we could be following something. We're going to make sure we're not. That's I don't. I don't know where they are. That's I know the where the five hundred uh, work that. Um, we've asked them to do. That's part of the amendment number two. So the motion that was seconded, can can we add to that saying that it's contingent, the approval is contingent on the on the information he's getting based on what was just recommended? Well, if you'd like it as a separate motion, I'll make that a separate motion to amend to make sure it goes through to that number goes through to to completion on on a plan. Right. Do you have all the through emails? conservation. Oh yeah. All right. So all right I'll, I'll second that. All right. So you get a motion on a motion, uh, amendment on a motion. So the first vote is on the amendment. The first, yeah. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And the second. Do I have a motion on that? You, you got one on the floor. So All right. Do I have a, second? a motion and a second already? Yes. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sorry to be confused. Yeah, I'm sorry. Aye. Mm. Yeah, I enjoy it. It's Robert's rules. I'm the only Robert at the table, so <laughs> that's why you have to say. So I think that um, we should all also have a running total as we go forward on the contingency, so then oh, that way we know where we are at all times. This will be updated uh, monthly. So okay. as invoices come in, we pay them. Um, you're going to get a month. This is a uh, um, this. You'll get a, yeah. You'll get a monthly budget report that reflects all the changes per month, okay. and then this will be submitted with all our invoices. So you're really getting two types of, of budgets. Um, but what I wanted, I just saw in Kelly's um, proposal, it does say that they'll flag the wet layer, wetlands and then add them to the plan prepared under their base contract. So we are covered there. So they'll be going to conservation, representing the conservation. I'm going to make sure they go into conservation, yeah. but it does say they're adding them. To the Just plan. make sure it takes us through approval from yeah. the commission. Now, just on the record keeping part of it, I see you're in bold six six forty two four fifty with a total cap by the by the um, the committee here at seven fifty. So that's roughly one zero seven five five. Add the it was around 5,000 between your 32.9 and Kelly's 28. So we should be around 112,000 to the good right now. Is that is my math pretty close? 
Yeah, the savings that we're having. Thirty two nine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah correct. Well five thousand from there, so we were a hundred and seven thousand still ahead of the seven fifty. That number will go up after yeah. I approve. What I didn't so want to be do was twelve, and then we'll start working in case we run into other stuff. Right. Correct. What I didn't want to do was only because he has some hourly rates in here. If he does hit something that takes a little longer, I wanted to keep the higher number yeah. in here, the thirty-two nine. Right. Just and so I'll I'll scale that back once we have a final number from him. Yeah. It always it always helps to err on the side of caution. I'm just glad to see that we're not up towards the seven fifty. We have a buffer of a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. That's it's a yeah. great great contingency on this first phase. And phase two is strictly estimates at this point, because we don't have that. We Correct. Don't have that. Well, our uh, CGA's contract is, is dialed in, our contract is dialed in, um, and then everything else is estimated. <coughs> yeah, but we don't have the money. We don't have the 429. No, no. no. Right. no. That's, that's what's coming. No, from. that'll be yeah, for phase two. Yeah. yeah, that's just, you know, part of our soft costs. Yeah, okay. it'll, it'll, it'll be more than that with the construction yeah, yeah, everything. Just a little bit, though. Right? Just a little bit. Yeah, I mean, if you look, if you look at items twenty to twenty-nine, those all have to be filled in in soft costs. So, we're we're in the process of building this budget to get us to a final number. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. Any questions? Your overall budget's in very good shape right now with the base one, so you should be proud of that. Great. I'm glad. Very good presentation. I'm glad that uh, we made a choice yeah. to move forward in one way I or the other. I think every meeting will make big choices mm -hmm. and move forward, so it's going to be here sooner rather than later. Well, there's a lot of work still to be Still done. to do, I know, but I mean, but, yeah, it's moving in one direction. It's starting to be a focused picture now. It's not yeah. so fuzzy as it was before. Yes, we made progress. Right. Anything else? So before we close it, mm -hmm. um, do you feel if we keep on this two-week schedule, we could maybe look at a schematic floor plan? Two weeks? Yes, we, we could. And um, and then after that, mm -hmm. um, we need to get we got to have some site questions answered. Yeah, we, it's, we definitely can take it to that in two weeks and be ready for a meeting. And then we don't want to go much further than that until we get some answers on the site where the wells are, do a soil test, see what we might be up against with the water table and the septic. Sure. You know, we want to. How fast can we hold? Not Kelly's feet to the fire, but to get them motivated. They said they were pretty quick to move. I'm going to kick them tomorrow and I'm hoping to see them out here next week. Okay. It shouldn't take, I mean, right. they have most of the work done. Yeah. It's a site walk and locate a couple wells. Yeah. Can we not um, do two weeks? Sure. That's I won't fine. be here. The work's not going to stop in between, so oh, we, could, we could do it three weeks out if that's better. I mean, I come back on the 10th, so... That was we don't want to meet on a Friday. Yeah. <laughs> We're real full in the week after, right? That was right? the one that I asked for. Not necessarily. So we, just, we don't know yet. The 17th? We don't have anything on the 17th, right? I have a library meeting when it's at 7. Is it okay? Or you have a regional FinCon meeting? Maybe. Okay. It doesn't matter what I say anyway. So yours is at 7? Yes. It's 7.03, so you, do you think that would no, be? No, 17th. Yeah. I mean, I can get out of here. I can leave a few minutes away, right? Yeah. Right. I think that way we'd hopefully, you know, I think we absolutely should, but we'll have site information by then. The 17th? Yeah. Is that good? I mean, that gives them three okay. weeks to get out there and Perfect. put some stuff on the plan. What yeah. time for again? Yeah. Does that work for everybody? It works for me. Is that okay for you? Okay. Bobby, Bobby? Sure. Okay. The only thing is, I'm going to have to miss that regional thing coming in there. Extremely important in August. What do they say? Right. Lisa, when they get the minutes, Lisa, when they get the minutes, they'll just email them. So we they're going to email them to us. Yeah, so we'll have them before we get yeah. But this one too. Yeah, it doesn't matter what we say. Okay. Also, is what it is. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. I'm mm, good. Motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.